let's describe this, Rory, because you must have seen quite a few of these rooms over the last few months. Yeah, man. And this isn't that bad, to be fair. And we do have another room. It's just my baby's in it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but th this room's all right. It's not too bad. We've been in some much dingier ones, especially over the last four or five years. Well, exactly. Especially yeah. on the come up, right? Yeah, you, for you're sure. used to that. Um, you're definitely not on the come up uh, anymore. But as you just mentioned, your little one, mm. who's now three months old, what difference has he made to your life? It's, it's made a massive difference to my touring. I didn't know how I would feel about going away straight away. Um, I had like two weeks blocked off in my diary after he was born. And then I was like, that's not enough. <laughs> and then I had to go away only for a couple of days, but that killed me, man. I was like, you know, really, it really killed me. And then going away and tour this time, knowing that I was going to be away for like a month was like, oh God. Um, but, you know, like I, st I, I love music, so, and you get on stage and it all kind of goes and then, you know, you start, afterwards you think about it again. People who become parents always describe, don't they, that it's a love that they'd never felt before. Yeah, for sure. It's unlike anything else. Um, and that's why, of course, the pain it's quite of it. Describe, it's hard to describe, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah. I mean, you're... A incredibly loving guy like i don't ever get a sense that you're kind of an emotionally cold person you seem no. like someone who is who loves unconditionally yeah and gives yeah man i wear my heart on my sleeve i like it that way and that must have been then quite tough as a carer no i f I, I think that actually like helped me from becoming like going from a, a, a bloke who's like a, a most other blokes that can't express their feelings and stuff like that you know growing up like that and being told you know not to you get told as a, as, as a boy growing up not to express your feelings and not to be upset or not to you know to, to be like that and then I think um, actually doing the job I did uh, made that a, a hundred times better you know you gain empathy and kind of respect and and um, all those um, traits that we should learn growing up you know who taught you how to be a man? Because your, your father left at quite a young age. So how did you learn about becoming a man? Or maybe uh, you're still on that learning. I don't know. I, I think you can. Uh, you, you don't really have to learn to become a man. You can, women can teach you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mum done a pretty good job. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she clearly did. Yeah. <laughs> clearly, clearly yeah. did. And you've been so successful in such a short space of time. Mm. I take it it must have sunk in by now? Kind of, yeah. Uh, well, it, it takes it, years to be an overnight success, right? Yeah, exactly. It does, it's, um, a lot of people um, say the... A lot of people say, like, oh, you know, you just... You came from kind of being totally unknown to being really famous or whatever, and I'm like, well, I don't really... I don't, I don't like, first of all, like the word fame very much at all, because I, I, if I could eliminate that side of it, I would, I think because I love to perform on stage and stuff, but I don't much like the kind of being constantly recognized all the time, you know? It, it, it's nice when people come up and they're like, yo, um, we really love your music and they want to talk about music and stuff, but the whole selfie culture like gets right on my wick. You know, it's like, you have people just stick a phone in your face all day long, you know? Like, what about um, secret selfies? You know, when people are trying to get that photo right, Let me of tell you, let me to... tell you uh, what, this guy on a plane, right? He he had a he had an SLR camera and an old school SLR camera, and you know the noises they make, yeah, <laughs> yeah the old school ones, ching -chi like that. <laughs> and he was like he was sitting in a seat, the the row across from me, and I could see his camera just slowly moving down and down and down until it got to me, and then he kind of looked at me and I looked at him, and I just heard this ching, -chi and I was like, you how are you trying to be stealth? With that, it was like when I was younger and I was like trying to watch porn on my mum's Betamax. And she's like, what are you doing watching? What are you watching down there? And you're like, nothing, mum. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? It's, it's so... Oh, no, I don't know what you mean. You're no, right. I don't know. Exactly. I have so, no it, idea what you're talking about. It was so <laughs> conspicuous. But, um, you know, and, and Did then... Did you call him out on it? I kind of looked at him and it just it, with that look as if to say, Why? What, what what were you gonna get out of that? No one's no paper's gonna buy that Rag and Bone Man sitting on a plane. 
<laughs> maybe did... eating some peanuts. <laughs> what? I just, I don't get it. It's really strange. Well, maybe you didn't go on Instagram uh, like little Bow Wow did and go, oh, this is my private jet and do that photo yeah. and then someone took a photo yeah. of him <laughs> in coach. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. You weren't doing that. So no, like, no, know. I'm not pretending to be flossy like that. Um, Muddy Waters, tell me about how Muddy Waters has influenced you. Uh, probably more than anyone, to be honest. Like, I remember hearing, um, I remember hearing his voice, like, probably as early as like six or seven and it's like a way I could describe it as like a, a bark of a massive dog it's got like this huge depth to it and I and I you know being that young you don't you know what, what people are singing about do you know what I mean and um but but I wanted to know it, it intrigued me so you know as I got older I used to pick records out of my dad's collection and stuff and and um, just he, I just, just used to sing along to him, you know, from from that age onwards. So people, people say stuff like, "Oh, you you sound like, or you sound like you're trying to be black when you sing." And I was like, "I don't, you know." There's there's these ongoing arguments of kind of cultural appropriation and stuff like that, but I feel like, you know, if you like. That, that that only kind of, you know, actually. Well, you're not doing brown face. Like, no. Why, why should no. you not be influenced by an artist no. of a different colour? I mean, that's, no, exactly. You know. I don't. I, I, I don't get where people are coming from. You know, if you if you're just suddenly like I don't know if I started like tomorrow, uh, singing like Sizzler. That would be odd. Yeah, <laughs> that, I that, came out and Jaja City, Jaja Town, and Mafia turn it, and then people were like, "Why is he singing patois?" And, and, and especially if I never, if it didn't even know about reggae music, <laughs> how weird would that be? That would be off key. Yeah, exactly. And um, you know, when I when I used to sing along back in the day, I'd put on the accent, you know. And but now I kind of, you know, I found my own style, so to speak. And you know, people hear that in my voice, I guess, because I, I listened to that growing up. On, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, you are quite physically imposing as a guy. When you walk into a room, everyone knows Rory's in the room, yeah. right? Yeah, it's because um, I'm massive. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Is, that, is, that, um, is that made you more confident as growing up or less confident? Uh, I don't know if it affected my confidence. I think now it's made me a little bit, bit more introvert because I know that people know who I am or... You know, I know that if if they know who I am, they'll know straight away because I'm I'm not fooling anybody if I'm putting on a hoodie and a hat. You know, <laughs> <laughs> sunglasses. And I had this interesting thing. conversation with DJ Premier, and we and we met like three three nearly four years ago, and he was like, I, he was like, I know that I know that you're going to be successful because I know he was like, I know singers, I know singers, and I know you're going to be big, and I was like, um. When DJ Premier says that to and, you, and, but that's then, quite a thing. And then we had a conversation, and I was like, how is it for you just, like, walking around New York or whatever, you know, do you, and do you get, like, pounced on and stuff by people constantly? He, he was like, well, you know, I I can kind of put on a hat and a hoodie, and I, I kind of go unnoticed most of the time. And um, but he was like, you're going to have a big problem with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's not wrong, because, like... You know, I've covered myself in tattoos over the years and I'm a big dude and, you know, there's no fooling people. So, you know, when you're walking around Audi or whatever... <laughs> people, <laughs> people are going to know. People are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is in the building. Yeah, that's him, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really interested in the decision-making process that leads into you tattooing your face. Because once you put a tattoo on your face, yeah. you're essentially saying to the world, I am not going to ever be behind a desk. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. My mate Giz said something really interesting to me. He was like, he read through some of the comments on my Instagram. So like, oh, some of these people are getting really salty about you having a tattoo on your face. And he was like, if you think about it like this, you've got a tattoo on the side of your face, which is about an inch and a half to two inches from the other tattoo on your neck <laughs> that you've had there for like 10 years. And it's, do you know what I mean? Yes. It's a bit of a weird thing to get <laughs> yes. salty about. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, it's it's um, all of us. 
I, I'm from a crew in Brighton called Rum Committee, um, and we all had um, a kind of um, spiritual home and a little studio that we all worked out of when we used to um, record together, and it was called 101 Southwick Square. And um, the place got sold recently, and it's no more. So all of us, all like 10 of us, got 101 tattoos. So, it, you know, it's, it's not like... It's good that you've got that kind of crew and that family around you, yeah. people, to keep it all chill, right? Yeah, and people to just take the mick out of you and, you know. Because that's another byproduct of fame, isn't it? How people change around you, not how you change. Yeah. But I feel like none of my mates have. They just like, when they get home, they just start, like, oh, yes, whatever, it's Rory or whatever, you know. Because I saw Ed Sheeran and Stormzy talking about this, and he said that they were both discussing this where friends try to outdo each other to prove how real they are by telling you how rubbish your new music is, right? So you play music, <laughs> and they'll go, no, 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 that's terrible. And you're yeah, like, yeah. it's not terrible. It's yeah. like, but they're trying to prove that they're your real friend. Yeah, yeah. Because they're being honest yeah, to you. Yeah, to be honest, I get that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite an interesting insight. Yeah. I've never heard artists talk about something like that you No, know, I've had my mates being like, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to Brighton for a bit, and we're playing a gig in Brighton. And I'll, I'll sort of text around and be like, yo, do you, do you guys need... Um, guess this for the show because we come and have a thing afterwards and they're like nah mate we'll just come to the pub after like oh you, you don't want to come to the show <laughs> like no nah, not really <laughs> just like, like, wow all right, fair enough <laughs> that, that, that brings you down to earth pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty quickly yeah um your voice where does this come from if we went on a search of who do you think you are right yeah. to find out where does this voice come from where would we Fine. What would be our destination? Well, the, you know what? Recently, I found this video online, and I, and I used to go to this um, uh, open mic jam night, and it was like somewhere like Croydon, and there, I remember there was a kid who played guitar. He was about fifteen. He was an incredible sly guitar player, and um, and he used to play Rolling and Tumbling, Muddy Waters song, and um, and I remember. That was, that was the first time I'd ever sung like on any type of stage anywhere. And it was like 2003. And there's a video of it online. It's a really bad video because 2003 cameras weren't quite as good as now. <laughs> but um, I listened to it and I was like, I wonder like what, my voice sounds pretty much the same. Like it's way rougher and not quite as tuneful, but it's like, it's there. Do you know what I mean? It sounds, pretty much nature like or nurture yeah where does it come from if you were to look uh, that, can that's, you that's what i mean anyone? like i never um i never went out to sound like the way i did that, that's what i mean that was the first time i'd ever sung on stage and it came out the way it came out wow. it's not it's not sort of really dissimilar to the way it sounds now so and that was like 15 years ago nearly how has america taken to you um what have your visit so far to America been like? We've just started to kind of... Feel it out. Yeah, it's... It, uh, at first, it was it's, it's, it is a daunting process for any anyone, any artist, even an artist from the US. Because it's such a big place, such a vast place to try and conquer or whatever, you know, however you want to do it. Um, but we just played a tour there and we played like a pretty much sold out tour and you know, not humongous venues, places like Webster Hall in New York, like places like 1500 to 2000 people and stuff. So I feel like it's, it's, it's bubbling along in a nice way, you know? Um, yeah, I, 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 and we, 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 I don't know if we sold any records there yet. <laughs> I have no idea. Listen, you're selling tickets. But we gig, we can go and play gigs there, which is, you know, Oh, which person who's become a fan of yours have you been most surprised by, or most like, wow, they know I exist? I mean, DJ Premier is not a bad start. Yeah, to Primo be was good, but th that was that was. I remember that time when 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 he tweeted me, he was like, "Yo, Rag and Bone Man's the truth," and that was like five years ago, and and um, that was because someone had told him about me. It was it was it was a Jordan from Rizzle Kicks. I told Primo about me, which is a very weird. <laughs> Such kind of, a weird link. Yeah, yeah, link. yeah. yeah That's it's a, a strange link. With me, I want yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. We should all go that. Of you. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was really. It was really cool when um, Night of Wonder 
um, just he was just out of the blue, just sent me a message. He was like, "You're dope," and I was like, "You're, you're but you're not a wonder." Yeah. You know, produce some of the wow. some of the greatest hip hop. Yes, yes. Um, just people like that. You know, start music that I grew up on, and someone and actually, um, Russell Crowe was pretty bananas. He he called up. He rang us when we was in Australia, and he and he, and he called me up and said, oh, "I'm really sorry, I can't come to the show." And I was like. I didn't know that you were coming to the show, um, but he's just like a humongous fan, and he and he just he tweets about it all the time and stuff, and and he called us and he sent loads of clothes down to the show because he he he's partly owns some uh, a, a rugby team or something, and he sent loads of these clothes and stuff down. <laughs> I was like, thanks, Russell Crowe. <laughs> you know what I mean? For the rugby shirts. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, mate. Of all the things. Yeah. Wicked. Well, look, Rory, it's been brilliant. Thank you for taking time out because I know you're going to play tonight. No and, worries, uh, man. You've got to go on stage. It's all good. And, it, and it's great. And we feel like we interviewed you on Afternoon Edition so early on. Yeah. And it, it's so good that now we're just, wow. Oh, seen you go it, crazy. And I mean, now, I mean, you get rugby shirts from Russell Crowe. I mean, this I is crazy. Madness. This is levels. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, brother. Cheers, my man. Nice one, mate. Thank you.